I don't know how to describe my dad. Dad's like one of those words that it's like love or warm. Like there's no other definition for dad. My dad uh, was always pretty handy around the home. He was both a man's man, I guess you could say, um, but he was also very artistic. He'd be playing the piano or painting. I have two younger sisters and he asked us what color we wanted to paint the shutters on our house and we said pink and he painted them pink. So my dad likes to sing a lot. My dad was always there. He was at every game. He was always home for dinner. Even though he worked a ton of hours, he always made it home to the dinner table. He always cooked us an amazing meal. He was just super involved with everything that was going on, from studying homework to helping me out with sports to watching baseball games together. My dad loves gardening. That's something that always um, I've seen him do uh, growing up. He likes to have fun. He knows how to enjoy himself, and that's always you know been something that's really special. At a Mets game, I was probably sixth or seventh grade, and I was filling out an all-star ballot. He rewired the garage doors, um, and there were three buttons, but the right one opens the left garage door, and the left one opens the right garage door. I was filling it out, and I dropped my pencil underneath my chair, and for some reason, I reached through the back of my chair to go get it, and my arm actually got caught he would tuck me in at night and he would always hit his foot off this corner of this bed and he would like roll around on the ground in pain. He drove off from the gas station with the dispenser still hooked into the car. And I would laugh at him, but I can't talk about that because it's mean. <laughs> Ripped the pump away and there was a very fragrant shower of gasoline spilling over the car. So he had these headphones on listening to the radio play-by-play, play, and I'm like, Dad, my arm's caught. My, my dad worked at a, at a deli, he was a deli manager, and every now and then he would come home with lobster. My dad has the headphones on, he didn't understand just how loud he was talking, and he starts like basically screaming, Dad, get your head out! <laughs> it's just hilarious. He was one of the first people to get one of these mobile phones that was the size of a suitcase. And he'd put them on the floor and they would start creeping towards her. And he wouldn't say anything. My mom would turn around and just scream her head off. You know, what are you doing? You know, and then of course we would all laugh. He could not stand to be without it. So we went canoeing one day and he brings this thing on board the canoe, turns it over, loses it in the river. It probably cost thousands of dollars, but the very idea of being without a phone for an afternoon was more than he could bear. To be kind toward other people, to show them love and treat them with respect. To always stand up for myself. He always told me to be tough, to fight back if I had to. He helped make me the strong woman I am today. To treat every single person I meet the same. That is carried through in school, in life, at work. It's how to be a servant leader. You won't find anyone who is willing to do more for others uh, than my dad. Definitely shoot for the stars, you can, you can accomplish anything. Not to give up. Respect others no matter their station in life as long as they were good people and they worked hard because at the end of the day everybody really wants the same things. In life uh, he taught us to, me and my brother, to be um, volunteers, to uh, give the gift of giving. In his death I learned to say um, I learned the importance of saying I love you to the people who are around me um, today, in the here and now, than after they're gone.